Hi there. So in this video today, I'm going to talk to you about my new gravel bike, which is an Oro Terra C. So when I was looking at a new gravel bike, I didn't really know much about the brand Oro or even the Terra C for that matter. So what I thought I'd do is I'd just put together a, a short video just to detail a couple of points for the bike that I like. We'll have a look at the spec and have a look around some of the, the features on the frame. And then I'll also I'll give you my initial kind of first ride impressions of what I think of it just to give you a little bit more, more information. But when looking for a gravel bike, there's lots of different options, but the Oro at £2,099 is a very good price for the spec that you're getting. So let's, uh, let's have more of a deep dive into, um, into that now for you. So let's take a look at the website. So Oro is a UK brand designed in Sussex and they do gravel and road bikes. So let's have a look at the gravel, it's the Terra C that we're interested in today. So they did a number of different builds, all utilizing the same frame, so the same carbon frame. So on the right, you've got the Terra C Adventure, so it's the one by GRX 600, which is what I've gone for. They also do it in the Apex One, and they also do a 105 version for a slightly quicker road riding. They also do a GRX 800 for a bit more money there. They also do a very swanky Eckar one by option as well, and also the Terra C in a slightly more budget friendly model. So the bike I've gone for is the Jurex 600, which is £2,099.99 pence in the UK. So the good thing about the Aura brand is on the website they give you an ETA for a delivery time. And as you can see, with what's going on in the world at the moment, in four weeks time, you could be uh, getting one of these bikes yourselves. Let's have a quick look at the geometry chart. So I ride an XL and the stack on the bike is 644. So quite a high front end won't suit everyone and a reach of 407. So for the type of riding I do, it comes with 110 mil stem, which is pretty much road bike geometry from, from the way I fit. So what I'm probably gonna do is put a slightly short stem on there just to bring the handlebars a bit further back. So a bit more control when I'm off road. So let's look at the competition from the big three brands. So Trek, so for £2,150 in the UK, you get the Checkpoint ALR, so not even a carbon frame for that money. Very similar build with the GRX, although it is a two by at the front. Switching over to Specialized, you get the Diverge, so it's the base carbon, and the price on this is £2,600. It's an Apex One build, and you do get the Future Shock at the front, if um, if that's what you want, but significantly more money. From the likes of Cannondale, you get the Topstone Carbon 5, and that's £2,700 in the UK. So significantly more. So looking at something that's very close to the Terra C in price and spec is the Cube New Road C62 Pro, and that comes in at £2,349, so significantly more. Only about a month ago, this bike was just under £2,000, £1,999, but seen a significant price increase recently. So still significantly more money than the Terra C. Very similar build, GRX 600, and the same fulcrum wheels and carbon fiber frame and fork. Let's have a wander around the bike and see what it's all about. So first of all, I'll start off with the wheels. So on here, I've fitted the DT Swiss G1800s. Normally it comes with the Fulcrum Rapid Red 900 wheel set. I don't think there's anything wrong with that wheel set, but I needed another wheel set to fit on my other bike. So I bought the G1800s to fit on this. So I'll give these a try, although I'm sure there's nothing wrong with the, uh, with the Fulcrums. So fitted, you've got the Redestein Adventure tires. I'm not sure if that's pronounced correctly, but they are tubeless ready and in a 38C width. Roll really well. Tread is nice and fine, so they are pretty fast. But when it gets a little bit muddy, see so yeah, it's not going to provide much traction at all. Although the side knobs do give a little bit in the corners, which is nice. So up to the shifters, you've got the GRX 600 shifters. So 11 speed. Then you've got the FSA Adventure Bar, quite a nice little bar, and then the FSA Omega Stem. So 110mm, like I said, I'm probably going to fit a shorter one on there, just so it's a little bit 
more off-road focused than a, than kind of a road bike geometry. So as you can see, all the internal cable routing, really nice, goes into the head tube. Front brake then pops out down here. So on the fork, you've got nothing, no nothing entering up here like you normally would. So it keeps it all clean and really nice at the front. It's really good, really nice and clean. And then you've got the flip plate on the frame, really nice, you can see. So it's kind of a bluey color down here and like a goldy color up here. So it does change in different light. So it is, yeah, really nice colors. Really like it. With regards to clearance on the front, on a 38 tire, there's loads of room on the other side. So clearance is uh, no problem at all at the front. When you get to the back, they do say that you can fit a 42. But I think that might be a little bit ambitious in here at the moment. Like I say, it's a 38. You've got a little bit of uh, a little bit of clearance either side, so you probably could fit a 42 in there. But just bear in mind, for UK conditions, you can need a, bit, a little bit of mud clearance as well. So just be aware of that. So you've got the GRX 600 with a 42 chainring. So one by. With regards to the mounts here, you've got the mounts for the. Uh, for the front mech should you wish to fit one and then port for your DI2 as well if you wanted to put DI2 on it. So coming up to the back you got um, Made in Britain's little logo on there which is quite nice. This thing's actually a, a little rear light, easy to, to take on and off. I did wonder what it was in all the photos but it's kind of emergency light, you wouldn't really use it for to be seen or anything but um, just a good little emergency light. So. Seat post is the Oro seat post, alloy seat post in here, so straight, so not set back at all. And I've put a fabric saddle on here, which is my saddle of choice at the moment. So it did come with a pro logo saddle, but I swapped that out straight away. So down to the back of the bike, you've got the GRX rear derailleur and the SLX uh, 1142 cassette, and it's a 105 level chain on there as well. So with regards to the frame, really nice finish. As you can see, the paint is lovely. I do love the way it flips color in the different light, which is really cool. The other good thing about the, the carbon frame and fork is it does get a five year warranty on it, which is quite nice. I know some manufacturers are offering lifetime warranties, but uh, a five years pretty good from a, from a small brand. You've got the caliper on the rear, which is the, uh, the 400, GXR 400 mated to the 600 levers. So there we go. There's just a little quick overview of the bike. Like I say, it's, um, it's a pretty good spec for the money. I've ridden it a few times and power transfer feels really good. The bottom bracket is a push fit bottom bracket, which wasn't really what I was wanting. But unfortunately in this price range, it looks like most of the, the brackets are press fit as well. See how that, uh, that holds up over time. But the bottom bracket area is really chunky. It's a BB86. So any power is going straight to the rear, rear wheels, pro propelling you forward. But even on the rough stuff, even on the gravel, uh, the rough tracks, there's quite a lot of compliance in the front end. So it's not too jarring or obtrusive at all. So really quite comfortable, especially with the tires when you're running the tires at about 40 PSI for my weight. So I weigh about 95 kilos. So it's still a really comfortable ride. Just a final couple of points about the frame set. So you've got full mudguard mounts if you wish to fit mudguards. It's quite useful for winter riding. At the back, which is nice. What you've also got is rack mounts on here. And they're rated to only five kilos. So if you did wanna put a rack on there, you couldn't put much weight on it. So not very useful from, um, from my point of view but they are there if you, uh, if you want to be using. So there we are. So there's an overview of the Oro Terra C. If you want to put some comments down below, questions or anything, I will do my best to answer them. And if you want to see a follow-up long-term review, then, um, then please let me know. Thanks very much for watching.